Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about some ABS diagnosis that I'm doing on this 4Runner. I'll share with you some tips and tricks along the way for when you have speed sensor codes. What are some things that you should look for? What is your diagnosis approach, etc., etc. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. If you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's start with the concern. The customer concern is we got ABS light, multiple VSC, traction control off and whatnot. Unfortunately, this text stream that I used to scan the car before the, making this video, the cable broke. Of course, it, that's how working on car goes. One thing goes after another. But the code is CO205, left front speed sensor signal malfunction. So left front, driver's side front, that's the left front. We're gonna be focusing on the circuit. Now most people, when they read that code, they just jump up and go buy a speed sensor and call it a day. Well, actually, I will share with you some things that you should actually be doing before you just jump in and replace the wire and call it a day. It is common sense and in a lot of situations, the wire will be broken. The wire moves with the suspension up and down, but there are cases where it's actually not the wire, maybe it's the sensor, in the case where like this 4Runner behind me, 05 4Runner, where the sensor is separate from the wire, well, do you buy both, do you buy one, and what if, you, what if there's other stuff with the circuit? I'll share with you some things that you need to look at before you just buy parts and install them. So most speed sensor wires or the circuit, let's talk about the circuit in general, just so we can, we can fix the car if you don't understand how it works. Each sensor will have two wires. Some of them, some of these wires are shielded. So that signal would be protected. The sensor, most of the style sensors that Toyota uses and Lexus, it's just a sensor. There's a magnetic ring that passes in front of it. And that's how it reads a reading. Some of them will have ribs on the axle or whatnot. And those metal ribs, as they pass in front of the sensor, they create a signal. And how fast the signal rotates is how the computer knows what speed we're going. So it, it, when you're, let's say when an ABS actuation scene, when you slam on the brakes and one wheel locks up, the computer is looking at all the speed sensors, is expecting the speed of each wheel to slow down at an equal pace. If one wheel all of a sudden drops to zero, that means it locked up. That's how it knows that that wheel is the one that locked up. So it would actuate the ABS and starts pulsating that brake fluid. So it, that wheel wouldn't lock up. Now that we know how this works, each sensor has two wires and those wires, you can actually test them. A very simple resistance check. So let's go ahead and do that on the left front and see how, where we get to. So here's the first end of the speed sensor. This, this is the one that goes to the speed sensor itself. And the other wire goes up. Now, for video purposes, I'm gonna disconnect this wire, get it up here so we can do this test in front of you so you can see how we're gonna test these. So here's the other end of this wire. It just goes right here. And some cars, you know, some, some of the rear ones will go inside the car, so this might be a little bit more difficult, but this is a good example. So now let's do our test. So I got one side connected right here to one of the terminals. I got my meter set on resistance. We're just gonna do a simple resistance check here. So here's the other end of the wire. Let's see what we have. So it looks like we have 0.1 ohms, 0.2 ohms. That is actually good. That is continuity. I am happy with that. If you get anything in the mega ohms, kilo ohms, or you're leaving OL like this, this is out of limits. Some meters will say OFL, that's out of limits out of range or whatever the case may be. That indicates an open in the circuit. That means our wire is bad. But here's another thing that you wanna do. Connect it to the other terminal. Make sure that these wires are not crossed together. So in this case, I'm touching the other terminal here and it's still reading OL, we're good. Now let's switch our connection here to the other side and do the same. There we go. We got the same reading. Let's switch it to the other side, even though we tested it already, but it's good. This wire is actually good. Now let's talk about one situation when your sensor is part of the wire 
And to do that, I'm gonna plug in the sensor and we'll see how that reading looks like. Sensor is plugged in right here. Let's measure the resistance across the two wires. So we got around 341 kilo ohms. That is actually a reading. Typically these sensors, all, they'll be all over the place, depends on the style of the sensor, but you have a reading. If you have OL or something in the mega ohms, that is actually an open sensor or a sensor that, is, that has very high, extreme high resistance. The best way to check these, and you can read the, the repair manual, give you a spec, and that spec is usually all over the place. Two ways. First one is, go drive the car with a scan tool that can read data on ABS. You'll see the readings, and you see that one sensor that is, that is having issues with resistance. You're not going to see it at higher speeds, but as you're coming to a stop, you're going to see that sensor will just immediately drop to zero, or it'll have an erratic reading. Now that's if you have a fancy scan tool. If you're DIY, and this is who we're making this video for, go to the other side. Test the other side of, of the sensor. Preferably, I want you to remove the sensor. Sometimes these sensors will read differently when, whether the magnet is in front of them or not in front of them, but we'll talk about removing the sensor, which you shouldn't just jump and do. We'll talk about that, what happened with this car, but compare it to the other side. Just do a quick resistance check on this side, do a quick resistance check on the other side, and you'll establish a known good value. What should this value be? Now, if you have OL, like right now, if I connect these here, this wire is potentially open and we're done. Just get a sensor and wire, which is one piece. But in this case, in this fall runner, it's easier because they're separate. Now let's talk about the sensor and actually what happened to the sensor in this car. Now here's how the sensor for this car looks like. Most of them, some of them will have a round here. Depends on the style. But you notice the sensor is very new and shiny. That's because it's new. Here's how the other sensor I took out to see what's going on with it looks like. It looks like this. Folks, this is extremely common in the rust belt. These sensors will have an O-ring right here. Hope you can see that O-ring really well. That O-ring is notorious to get seized and you'll never get the sensor out without breaking it. But the other problem, the reason why I ended up removing the sensor out of this car is when the sensor sits in the hole that it goes into, it needs to be flush from rust Rust performs behind it and it gets pushed out and, and it sits at an angle and that's actually not good and I believe this is the problem with this car, although we found one more problem which we're going to look at, but this is the first problem because the sensor reading on this one was in the mega ohm, so I suspected that the sensor was not good and on top of it, it was pushed out from rust. I checked all the other ones, they're not, and we're not getting codes for them. So that's the, the typical thing. And if you live in the rust belt, this is a typical thing. Uh, every time you remove one of these sensors, likely they're gonna get broken and you're done. So I got a new sensor. We're gonna go ahead and install this, but let's look at where the sensor goes so you know how to clean it so it sits flush. This is where that sensor goes, right there. And I hope the camera can show it well, but you got thrust buildup right here and it's actually pushing the sensor to sit sideways. So now this sensor, instead of sitting like this, it's actually getting pushed back and sitting sideways. That could actually create a false signal. And this is something somewhat common with rusty to older Toyotas. That's just the way it is. This is a truck that has 200,000 miles. And uh, we've talked about this truck actually in a previous video that we did on it. We asked uh, the viewers if the owner should keep it for 300,000 miles and uh, for me a response, he actually went, coated the frame and all that, but this is uh, typical rusty stuff we're uh, gonna have to deal with. So, in order to clean this, you're gonna wanna clean it as best as possible to make it a flat surface again. So let me go ahead and do that and we'll install our new sensor and continue on our diagnosis because I wanna show you one more thing with this truck. All right, we're just gonna take a hammer, Beat a little bit of that rust off. Get a screwdriver, try to get the flakes off. There we go. Clean the hole a little bit. 
Now that is a flat surface. Really hard to see it on camera, but you've seen the flakes fall off of it. This is what actually pushes these sensors out. Don't try to just remove the sensors, just to do this to protect them because you'll always end up breaking the sensor. These sensors can get a little expensive. So unless you have an issue, don't worry about it. Even if you see the gap, sometimes the gap is small enough where it doesn't cause an issue. But if you start getting codes, that's when we have problems and if you're watching this video we got some grease here we'll address that with the owner later just in case you're going to comment about this let's install our new sensor here and then i will go upstairs and we'll show you one more thing so after we replace the sensor and we're looking at everything i want to plug in the connector the car harness side not the wire that that goes to the sensor and it just felt odd even when i unplugged it i looked at it this was part of the diagnosis this is why you have to be looking at everything the, this is another one that is a rust special there is corrosion on the wires green wires green grumlins that is something very typical of rusty cars let me take you in and let me let me show you that and how we're going to clean it so this is the wire that is from the car side and this is where it plugs in this is the one that we pulled through to do the check on the resistance and here's how this end looks like i really hope you can see it let me try to zoom into it more you notice the green tint to it that is actually corrosion so let's go ahead and clean that i got some electrical cleaner just something off the counters. Let's spray it down. And then I have a terminal. This is actually a similar terminal to where it goes here. If you don't have access to this, a very small screwdriver will work. You just want to scrape up the rust. You just go into it a few times with the cleaner. Clean it some more. Now that's already looking much better. The idea is you want to see the shininess. That is much better now. I am happy with it. Spray it some more. Okay. Now you're going to want this to either air dry or use just compressed air to dry it up. I have compressed air here, so let me dry that up. Plug it back in and we're all set. Yeah, that's good. So at this point, you're gonna erase your codes, go drive it, verify it. If you were using a scan tool, verify that they're all reading right and life is good. Here are some additional tips. If you have a dead open wire, like a wire that's completely cut, Here's a simple way to know that you have a hard fault or you might have corrosion, you might have a bad sensor that's not reading right sometimes. How do you distinguish between a hard problem or an intermittent one? If you erase the code and turn on the key, if it comes right back, you have a dead open circuit. You have something broken completely, not intermittent, not the sensor is not reading right or whatnot, like a completely broken wire. And you're going to be able to find that very easily. But the only thing I will warn you about is if you checked all your wires and all checking good, the sensor's good, there's no gap, the resistance checks out when you check it with the other side, I want you to trace the wire back to the ABS because you could have rodent damage, you could have all kinds of issues that, because the wire, you need to trace the wire basically from the speed sensor all the way to the ABS module. As you go, you're going to find your issue. If you find your issue with the speed sensor wire, that is the most common because that's the part that moves with the wheel and exposed to the elements but sometimes you have rodent damage and i've seen this a lot where one wire is nicked and that's all it takes if your code you erase it and it doesn't come back that indicates you could either have a gap or a sensor is not reading right sometimes a bad wheel bearing will cause this you'll have so much grit and material on top of the sensor that it's just not reading right it has a lot of material stuck to the tip of it but these issues will not come right back. You erase the code, you drive it, then it comes back, not right away. If it comes right away, you have a broken wire and it should be easier to find. So let me share with you some tips before we end this video on what happens if your sensor is broken. 
So you have this on the end of the car and you're trying to, you're gonna first try to twist it a little bit, put a screwdriver behind it and try to kind of walk it out because that O-ring is seized. If it snaps off, you're gonna have this piece stuck inside the hole where the sensor goes. You're gonna take a drill, drill a hole right in the middle of it and try to pound the edges in. What that's gonna do is, it's gonna kinda pull that, that front area that is stuck because there's nothing touching in the back. You're only wanting to try to crumple that area where the O-ring is. As soon as you do that, you can actually grab it with a plier and pull it and it'll come right out. Just do me and yourself one huge favor. Do not drill all the way through because if you do, and you notice here, I did not drill all the way through. I only drilled until here. Let's see if that camera can focus here. I only drill till there because if you go all the way through, you could actually damage where the sensor picks off of either a magnetic ring or a part of the axle. So be careful with that. Otherwise, if you don't live in the rust area, just be careful with these sensors because they could still seize because of that O-ring, but it's not gonna be as bad as rusty land like we have it here in Chicago and other rusty areas. I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.